When I kicked off this project, I straight up promised myself, if my bot doesn't make it to the top 1 in aimlab leaderboards, I am not making a video. And since you're watching this right now, well, I guess I nailed it. So today, I'm spilling the beans on how I whipped up one of the trickiest and coolest aimlab bots in just a few days. Buckle up, it's gonna be fun! Okay, uh, first off, if anyone's living under a rock and doesn't know what AimLab is, basically it's a super popular game, especially among esports pros, and gamers use it to grind for a better aiming skill. Sharpen that flick shot, the trick enemy smoother, you get the idea. So what's the reason for me to make a bot for this game? As always, because it's fun. Plus I wanted to challenge myself. But hey, I'm not a bad guy, I won't make things worse, since AimLab's top leaderboards is is already full of cheaters. Just look at this, no way a human can score that much. Besides, we will not use any cheats, instead we are gonna train our custom AI. And before we begin, my bot ain't gonna make it to the top 1 without your support, so make sure to smash that subscribe button. And with that being said, let's dive in. And I've started with the basics. I wrote a code to grab screenshots from the screen, thus allowing our bot to see the image of the game just like we humans do. Absolutely no hacking into the game memory or anything shady, we're just looking at the game's picture, that's it. And right off the bat I got about 40 FPS capture in Full HD, sweet. Our next task is to spot those blue target balls, their color stays consistent, which is a huge win. So I've came up with a few possible solutions. The first one is to train a custom neural network, say based on YOLO model, although that sounds a bit like overkill. I could also use AutoHotkey's image search function or train a custom hard cascades in OpenCV, the thing is I don't have much experience with them. That's why I ditched them all and came up with a better solution. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to detect the blue balls we're gonna use a color masks. The way this method works is that we convert our image to HSF color space and HSF stands for hue saturation value and after that we determine the lower and upper boundaries of the color mask. And now if we run the code, poof, everything vanishes, except the targets. What? what Magic you say? Nah mate, that's programming. And if you're gonna actually try it yourself, I must warn you that HSF scaling may vary. In Photoshop or Color Picker, blue color is represented by the value 180, but in OpenCV it's going to be 90, so keep that in mind. I've also added bouncing boxes to have some kind of visual representation of the detected targets. And not only it looks better, but if you look closer, you can see incorrect detections, like this small rectangle inside of another rectangle. And these are called false positives. In order to get rid of this and get a cleaner result, I've used two algorithms, NMS or non-maximum suppression to remove overlaps and rects intersection to filter all the leftovers. And here is the result, looks much much better to me. Besides, now we have the coordinates of the targets on the screen, and our bot will use this information. By the way, when I played manually, my highest score was around 60 to 70k points on this particular map. I'm curious what's your high score? Drop it in the comments, let's see who's better at aiming here. Spoiler, I know my aiming sucks, that's why I'm making this bot. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, let's move on. My next task is to teach our little bot here to actually aim at his targets. Sounds easy, eh? Well, you will be surprised. And here comes the important theory. The huge difference between mouse cursor and crochet in the game is that OS-wise mouse moves in absolute or relative modes and there is no such thing as pixels, instead it uses a unit called Mikey. A Mikey is a unit that determines the minimum amount of mouse movement. To be more precise, Mikey is equal to one tenth of a millimeter. Practically, it moves the cursor of the mouse by around 2 pixels per Mikey. And now I have a question for you. Have you ever thought about how games handle 360 degrees crochet movement without letting the mouse cursor to go beyond the game window? Well, currently there are two main approaches being used. First approach is called mouse teleportation. Basically, it works just like the snake in snake game. When the cursor moves out of the window, the game then moves it to the opposite side. 
The second approach relies on fully blocking your mouse at the same position, usually just the middle of the screen. And to get the mouse movement vector, the game detects cursor displacement between the frames. One more thing you should understand is that most games are made in 3D space, but your monitor can only display 2D image, thus it only has two axes, X and Y. So how does the game engine transforms 2D mouse cursor movement into 3D space inside the game? You're gonna love it. The answer is angles. Game engine developers write special functions to translate 2D mouse movement coordinates into angles. Of course, they also consider such things as FOV or the field of view. Literally, everything is involved into crochet and mouse movement calculations. Now you may ask me, howdy, why on Mother Earth you explained all of this right now? Well, my partner in crime, just because without it you would not understand how it works. You see, the issue here is that we cannot simply move the cursor along blue ball detection coordinates and expect the game to move the crusher to the same position. That's just not how it works. Aimlab, like all modern shooter games, uses the second approach to detect mouse movement. The game simply blocks the cursor at one position, and it does not move anywhere from there. To put it simple, whenever you try to move the mouse cursor in your code, Aimlab says F*** you, I don't care. Thus it completely ignores all the absolute movement of the mouse. And probably the only game I know that uses the first approach, absolute movement, is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Although I must admit I'm surprised why Valve has not yet covered this bench. Oh wait, actually Counter-Strike 2 came out recently, and guess what, now CS2 uses the second approach as well, making it nearly impossible to move the crusher inside the game programmatically without reading the game memory. Thank you, Valve. And if you still don't understand what's the issue, say no more, let me show you. If I try to move the crusher in the game using XY coordinates of the detected target, here is what happens. Thus I've came up with a tricky solution, a hackaround you may call it. I've used MF functions to describe non-linear relationship between 2D Cartesian coordinates and 3D planar angles using theta, beta, alpha, delta, uh, to be honest, I have no idea what the f I'm talking about. But the code I wrote somehow works, although the accuracy is not perfect. And if you want some sort of explanation, well, here you go. You can pause the video and enjoy this whiteboard I've came up with while brainstorming the algorithm for the code. Again, that's not perfect, but at least it works. And as we coders usually say, if it works, don't touch it. Okay, now let's run the code and see how it works. Let's do some testing. To be honest, I was flabbergasted, because it behaves like a human, and I swear it's not me aiming the mouse. Here, look at this, that's the butt. I mean, yeah, for sure, it looks awesome. But don't forget about our ultimate goal, ladies and gentlemen, and that is to get top 1 in Aimlab scoreboard. Once again, looking at how our bot currently aims, I would say even my grandma will do it faster, so we need to optimize the aiming speed. So I've made some changes to the code. Instead of moving the mouse slowly towards the target, I've tried to make it a single shot mouse movement. It's still not as accurate, although it should aim faster now, so let's try that. And now it works much faster. As you see, the bot tries to aim down targets at a single mouse movement, and most of the times it succeeds. But that's just not enough. Even though we're getting around 155k scores, it's not even a top 100. One way to improve it is to optimize the target sorting order. You see, the human player most of the times will prefer to aim at a cluster of targets rather than at a single target. Even if the single target is currently closer to our crusher, it's more likely the player will prioritize two or more targets close to each other. The logic here is simple. More closer targets equal more easy scores. And I've implemented this logic in our code. I've wrote a sorting function to prioritize cluster of targets over a single target, even in cases when they are located further away from the crusher. So let's try that in the game to see how it works. And at first it may seem there is no difference, but if you actually look at the score counter, you will notice a huge improvement. Within the first 30 seconds our bot scores around 100k, although it's not consistent. And the final result of our second test is 181k, and that brings us to the 12th place. Yeah, that's better, but still not good enough. 
So what else we can do? Probably one last thing that left is to fine tune the timings. For example, let's play with delays and intervals in the code. Few minutes after, I came up with these values. I've set pause delay after mouse movement to 90 milliseconds. And now I'm actually out of ideas on how to optimize the aiming. So let's hope it'll work. This time I was a bit worried, because if the bot would not land a first place, that means I would not publish the video, as you remember. But since you're watching it right now, that means we are finally made it! Our bot scored 193k, and it means we are now made it to the first place in the aimlab leaderboard, sweet! And you will not believe it, but I've actually ran the bot few more times, and now it made over 200k scores, wow! Perfect! everything down to the last minute details. And that wraps our video today. I'll leave the source code of the bot in the description below in case you want to learn how it works, so make sure to check that out. And if you like this video, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And of course, have a good day.